Hello, my name is Nigel Griffiths. I work in Power Systems Advanced Technology Support in Europe. In this series, we're looking at the new Power 9 server range, and we've got to the E980. This is a fast facts video with lots of information presented very quickly. The E980 is the biggest box in our range, and it has to be one of the fastest commercial computers in the world. The computer is modular, so we have up to four of these units. These are called the KEC, or Central Electronics Complex. Sometimes it's called the Node, sometimes the compute draw. In these are CPUs, memory and adapters. 19 inches wide as you'd expect for a standard rack, 5U high, a little bit larger than the 4U that a lot of computers are made to, and it's quite deep, 34 inches deep. You have to be a little careful about getting this into your racks, make sure that they're long enough. So how do we build up a machine out of these modules? Well, first we'll need one system control unit. This has some LEDs, buttons and indicators in the front and a USB connection. Wow, that's exciting, isn't it? It has the service processors in the back, a pair of them for reliability. And on top of that, we'll actually buy our nodes. Each node has four Power9 chips, up to 16 terabytes of memory and eight PCIe Gen 4 adapter slots. And we can have one node or two nodes or three nodes or four nodes in the system. This is always placed near the bottom of the rack to lower the, the center of gravity. Now if we take a node, put it onto a very white table, take the lid off and take a picture from above, this is what it looks like. In here we have various things, but we very rarely actually take the covers off them, only if you want to upgrade the memory or replace a faulty part do we do that. Everything else can be taken out of the front or the back of the machine, leaving it in situ in the rack. So starting at the top, we have the front of the machine. There's fans and power supplies there. We'll have a look at those in a minute. Then with the blue handles, we have the voltage regulator modules. This is to give us very stable, safe electricity inside the machine and to protect the more expensive components, like the 32 memory C dims or custom dims that are in a the bank there. They all look black with little white dots on the end. Then we have four CPU sockets, and we can actually see the socket and the heat sinks in this picture. At the back of the machine, we have adapters in blind swap sets we have NVMe disk type devices and we have SMP cables that join up all the nodes to make this into one big computer and diving into the CPU facts we have four power 9 chips per node four nodes so we have 16 power 9 chips per server each chip has 8 to 12 CPU cores depending on what you purchase a total maximum is 192 CPU cores running at 4 gigahertz now we run simultaneous multi-threading at a level of 8, so that gives us 1,500 plus programs running at the same time, each actually making progress every clock cycle. Looking at the memory in detail, we have 32 of these custom DIMM modules. You can see a picture of one. I took it out of my machine, took a quick picture of it. The silver thing there is the level 4 memory cache controller. It has 16 megabytes of cache on each one of these. Lots of them in the machine, various sizes extremely high RAS. If you look there's four rows of the little black uh, chips in there but there's ten of them in a row so these are that gives you extra RAS features way beyond what you can get in any other sort of server. The total memory size is quite staggering 64 terabytes per server. Now that does come at a considerable cost but when you think there's a lot of interest in putting your data into memory or your entire database into memory you can get a significant performance boost by having more memory in your server. As with the rest of the range if you can see blue, then it's a touch point, it means you can do something. Not too much in this case for this server. The blue handles here that you use to pull off the front bezel, we'll do that in a second. Down here we can have two handles that uh, pop down and you can use to pull the draw out of a rack for maintenance. If we take the front bezel off, we can see more interesting things in here. Again, blue handles mean you can do something. Down at the bottom we have the system control unit and further up we have one of the node or drawers. Here we have five fans across the top and you can see little handles to remove each one of these. You can do this with the machine up and running. And then we have the four power supplies. We can see the cables loop around and actually go through a tunnel to the back of the machine to plug into your PDU. Down the bottom we have the system controller, the LEDs, buttons, indicator lamps. We also have a USB. There's a little connections over here that look like USB. They probably are, but they're not for client use. This is used by the engineers, probably for diagnostics or initial booting up of the firmware. Now we move around the back of the machine we see the system control unit uh, at the bottom and on the top of that is a single node drawer for this particular configuration. First we're going to highlight the four connectors that go through to the front power supplies per node. The system control unit takes power from the first keck 
and we can see the cables marked up on this chart. Of course, if you have four KEX, you have 16 mains cables. In the system control unit, we have the two servers processors, FSPs. Each have Ethernet connections to the two HMCs. Each also has a blue cover, which is for the time of day battery. That makes it very easy to change those with the machine actually running later on. They tend to run out every four or five years. Then we have four sockets on the system control unit that goes to each of the nodes. In this case, we've only got one, so we've got a little cable that loops up and goes to the keck above one for each service processor. If we move on now to the node, we have two clock controllers per node. In previous generations, the clock controllers were actually in the system control unit, but there's now a pair in every single node, so there's eight altogether if you have the full config. It also removes the need for clock cables going from the system control unit to the nodes. Makes the machine easier to set up and manage. There's three USB ports per node. One on the first CAC has an extension lead to the system control unit. Think of it as a way of avoiding having to reach into the back of the machine. That port is available on the front of the system control unit. And if you have all four nodes, of course, you have 12 USB ports. Much more interesting is the eight quick release blind swap cassettes for the PCIe Gen 4 adapters. These aren't quite the same as the ones in the previous range, or they look very similar. Once you've taken appropriate actions on the HMC to power off the slot, you can pull this handle down and pull it out of the back of the machine. Then there's two blue buttons you press to release the catches and to take the covers off, and you can pull the PCIe adapter out very quickly, probably taking 60 seconds to do an adapter, to put a replacement or a different adapter back in and get it back in the machine. Over the four nodes, you of course have 32 PCIe Gen 4 adapters. Below that, there are 16 25 gigabit ports per node. There's four ports per Power9 chip, and those ports are directly connected to the chip behind it. Three of those are used to connect to the other nodes of the machine for SMP. This is sharing the memory between the nodes on demand. There's one extra port there that we used in the future for high-speed connections to things like CAPI, GPUs, maybe remote IO draws. In the entire system then we have 64 of these ports and 48 of them are used to make this into one big server. In the middle we have some new devices called NVMe. Think of these as a solid-state driver, a disk, connected to a PCI port going straight into the chips. This means it's very low latency, very fast, and behaves like a disk. Each of these has its own PCI port, so you can assign it to different logical partitions or VO servers. These make very nice VO server boot devices, for example. You'd put two of them into a VO server and then do mirroring between the two for reliability. So each Node in the machine will support two VIO servers very nicely. If you need more brown spinning disks or SSDs in your machine or more PCIe adapters in your machine, then we have remote IO drawers. These are the same drawers as we had with the previous Power 8 models, and a lot of people are already familiar with these. But putting these all together, if you take the very powerful Power 9 processor, the vast quantities of memory we have in this machine, and the internal bandwidth and the connection to the outside IO, we end up with a 38% jump in performance with this generation of machine compared to Power 8. And if you're coming from Power 7, then you literally it could be a 2.3 times performance jump in your workloads. As well as the technical stuff, there's a whole lot of things that come with the top of the range power server. A reminder to get a current HMC, it's got to be running the 920 or above software level and we recommend the CR1 version of the new HMC. Included in the price is PowerVM, PowerVC, Power to Cloud Rewards, which gives you service days to help you install and get this running. You could use that as for skills enhancement as well. We have the cloud management console, so you can monitor your machines on your tablet, for example. And we also have the active memory marine for our hypervisor, which gives you extremely high RAS. Optionally, of course, you can have the elastic capacity upgrade on demand and enterprise pools for Power 8 and Power 9 processors. So here's our summary chart about the new Power System Server, the biggest, fastest computer to run AIX, Linux and IBM i, also running Power VM for the virtualization and Power VC for rolling out cloud virtual machines. I'm not going to go through all the facts, we've covered them already, but you can pause the video if you want to read through them. Well, that's it for this video. We've packed in as many facts as we possibly can. If you've liked this video, learn something, give us a thumbs up. It's always good to have feedback. If you like this and you want more of my videos, youtube.com user Nigel A.R. Griffiths is the place to go. Don't forget you can subscribe if you want to be informed every time a new video is released.